Well, here's my latest acquisition, uh, Enco 9x20 lathe. I bought it just before I started that airboat project or around that same time, so it's been hanging around about three months. Uh, it has a bad plastic drive gear. The gear is just completely tore up. And the reason it's tore up is, well, probably age and also the fact that this bearing right here has gone bad on this gear selector shaft. So it's catching a little bit, causing a little extra drag. I've cleaned it up a little bit, oiled it up a little, and I'm going to replace that gear with one that I found online that I 3D printed out of PLA plastic. And uh, I will post in the comments as to how long this thing lasts. This lathe isn't going to see a whole lot of use, so for me it should last a good long time. I ordered this gear online, but the center bore is smaller. But my thought when I ordered it was that I would bore the center bore out and put a brass bushing or something like that in it. But we're going to go with this one for now and see how that works. The only thing really wrong with the lathe is this here is broke off right here and it doesn't have the right part around the outer edge of the cross slide. But it's a lathe. It could make that part if I wanted to. Nothing to do now, but see how all this comes apart? and get those old bearings out of here and put in the new ones. Hopefully they fit. It's not real easy to see into here, but there's the seal off of that bearing. The carrier is broke inside of the bearing. Actually, that looks like a piece of the carrier right there. Well, it's time to make with the disassembling. Wow, that's tight. I'm sure somebody will tell me if I did this the wrong way, but as far as I could tell, there was not any flats or anything on that shaft to hold onto that shaft. So bolt wasn't very tight, so it didn't put very much pressure on the gears. And let's see how many parts we can lose doing this. Uh-oh. Woohoo. Uh, somebody forced that on. Somebody used a little more force than necessary to put that gear on there because it does not want to come off. Roll pin holds this on the end of the shaft. And I got a nice little catch tray down there to catch my parts. Come on, baby, don't make me get a puller out to pull you off. It's just too easy to do it this way. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Almost there. Presto. One down. I knocked this cap out of the end with this long screwdriver. I didn't have any way to pull it out before I took the shaft out. But I believe I'm going to have to get this snap ring out of the end and put the whole thing through this way. The end of this, you probably can't see it yet, has been hit with a hammer and it's a little peened over so that bearing is going to be very hard to get off. So. 
Woohoo! Got it out. Didn't lose it. Didn't shoot it across the shop. That screw's a little sticky all the way out. It has roll pins to line it up in the top corners, which will mean a little bit of pressure required to get it to come out. Get it out a little ways. Presto. Well, that gets me a little room. Maybe a puller on there now will pull it off. Before we pull this off, there's the condition of that bearing. The carrier is pretty much gone out of it, and the balls are all going to wherever they want. And when I turn it, I can feel it catch, move, catch, move. It's moving smooth now. She's not in too good a condition though. Now let's see if the bearing pulls off or pulls apart. It should pull fairly easy even with that little edge peened over, but with the size of the cone on this bearing puller, it's going to stop when it hits that. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh Burred up a little bit where somebody hit it. It is almost going to make it before it hits the cone. And I think it just hit the cone. Yep. All right. I'm going to have to find something to put in there as a spacer to push that shaft the rest of the way out of there. How about an actual spacer? Might work. I need another hand or two. <laughs> Nothing is holding itself still here. Everything's free floating. Is this going to work? That spacer was not the greatest idea. It's a little long, a little floppy. And the winner is, is it the bearing or the puller? The puller wins. Ta-da, it's all out now. And Bob's soft jaws are back in the game. Might I add, these are version 2.0, even better. Now I know you're asking, well, you're probably not, but how do I go about making myself such a beautiful set of soft jaws? Well, you're gonna need a couple of scraps of lumber, a couple of magnets, and just below flush, that ought to work. A couple of screws and uh, a little effort. And this beautiful set of magically held in place soft jaws could be in your shop. Easy as that. And I do have a set of aluminum soft jaws and a place to store them at. But I don't want to beat them up on every job I do. I like to keep them kind of smooth and shiny. Hmm, my puller wants to walk over at an angle. But the bearing is moving. And I guess that's what counts. Two bearings off. 
That looks like a good socket for that job. Nope. Yep. Nope. Nope. Won't go deep enough. This one still stays on the flange of the bearing, the inner flange. And, yep, it goes all the way on. Tool abuse. I'd say that's it. Yep, she's there. Take all the spare parts out of there and all that good stuff. Alrighty, there are probably better ways to get these bearings in here, but this seems to be the most straightforward. My goal here is to not lose a finger. All right, let's get that deep enough to put the snap ring in. Snap ring launch in three, two, well, how about that? I took it out and put it in and didn't once launch it across the shop and have to search for it. That spins better already. Aluminum pulley, steel shaft. Presto. Very, very tight. Very, very, very tight. Hmm. Get it over here on the table and put some pressure on it. Just see if it slides on down on there. Nope. Nope. This precision honing device is a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a large cutter key. Well, I'm not really sure. Maybe my printer over extrudes a tiny bit, but that was very tight in the center. Took a little bit of work to get it to go in there, and it's still snugger than what the original gear was, but at least there's no play in it. Now we'll put it all together, see how it engages the teeth. Seems to engage the teeth real well. The alignment is good. I didn't check to see if it was any thicker than the original gear. I measured the other gear and zeroed it, and this is about 75 thousandths thicker. So, what do you do? And I'm back, and I threw this in my shop master lathe slash milling machine. It's a refugee from a wrecking yard, but it does work. Now let's see if this thing will fit. This is very tight in this hole, so it doesn't slide off and on like it's supposed to, but, ooh, must have some plastic inside there. <laughs> Fully portable, compressed air. Always useful, always handy. Well, where's it gonna tighten up at? There it is. Just a little snug. Oh yeah, now the clip will go on. Well, ah, there we go. And the alignment is beautiful. All right, the moment of truth. Let's flip the power switch and see if all the teeth strip off of that gear. Oh, I could put the keeper on there first. 
Keeper, keeper. All right. Nothing should fly off of it, we hope. Stand back. Oh, got to put the other two drive gears on it now. Put our cover plate back on. So we can engage and disengage our gears. All right, neutral. All right, the uh, 3D printed gear does work. Um, it needs a little modification to fit into this machine. It's a little bit too thick and it's a little tight around the center. The tight around the center part might have been because my 3D printer might over extrude a tiny bit. So settings are important on 3D printers. But anyway, it works. Um, you can order a metal gear, but I haven't found a place where you can order the plastic gears. I think I found one, but it was extremely expensive. And if you've got a 3D printer, this gear is extremely cheap to make, especially when you make it out of PLA. I want to upgrade my printer so I can make these out of nylon. But I will put something in the video description if this gear dies uh, really quick or something like that. But it seems to work fine now. Got new bearings in it. And luckily, I found out probably what killed this gear was when this got broke, this will walk off the end of here. And this lock pin will drop into the gear and lock it up. So uh, I've got to either fix this or buy a new one before I tear it up again. But anyway, this is my new toy. Not like I needed it. I already have a lathe, but this one here hopefully might be more uh, precise than my refugee from a wrecking yard. Thanks for watching. Well, I was digging through the boxes of parts that came with this thing, a couple little boxes. I found the piece off of here. And I found a metal gear. But I didn't even know it was in with the rest of the gears. But I really don't want to run a metal gear. I want something that will kind of give up if uh, something gets too stressed out. But it's there if I want to run it. All right, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.